very useful, very informative. I really like these programs. But today there is an important meeting, so I have to go in between. Can these, uh, I see these programs later, uh, these can, can be recorded or sent uh, on my email? Yes, we will do yes. that. In fact, we are doing a compilation. We will do that. Thank Once you so the much. Series is complete. Yeah, I was just thinking I'll miss this program, but uh, it's really wonderful and it's a good opportunity for we academicians as well as for administrators. And I will also like to contribute in future in your program. Yes, yes, Thank sure. Thank you Akash, can you please uh, call Mr. Subramaniam and uh, help him to join this uh, web room? There are some problems he's having. Uh, sir, I have called sir and I have shared the link. He's joining, sir. He's joining. Okay. Oh. okay. So, schedule discussion, if we look at the UN.
¿no? Unamji, you can start, please. Sri Subramanian will join. Huh. Thank you, sir. Good morning, you all. First of all, I would like to welcome all the senior recognitions, the uh, participants, and especially the two lead spe speakers who will grace these sessions, uh, Sri L.V. Subramaniam, sir, and Madam, uh, and Madam Sri K. Sri Anand Arora and all the participants. I think we have already um, uh, invited the district collectors in uh, who are working in ADP districts and the academicians and the from the in Indian Institute of Management side and all the um, uh, faculty from NCGG and ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, I would like to welcome the two lead speakers and uh, Sri L.V. Subramaniam, sir. Sri L.V. Subramaniam has joined the Indian Administrative Service in 1983, sir has sir is the former chief secretary of government of Andhra Pradesh. He has held several important assignments such as vice chairman and MD joint secretary in youth. Andhra Pradesh is chief secretary in urban development responsibility for department of health, medical and family welfare and finance department, a special chief secretary in department of sports and youth affairs. He has graduated from Safa Sai College in the year 1979. Postgraduate in political science from University of Bangalore in 1981, PG National Development and Project Planning from University of Bradford in 1994, and Diploma in International Labor Organization from International Training Center, Turin, Italy in 1999. During the days of collector and district magistrate of Mahbub Nagar, district uh, Mahbub Nagar, uh, district, several initiatives were taken which were insignificant because we are uh, organizing this uh, number of series in the state administration, administration, leadership role of chief secretary in performance monitoring and coordination, crisis management and personal uh, administration. So that's why we are talking about that the, the initiatives were taken during the, I think, the tenure of the, as a chief secretary in the district collectors. So a vision doc, uh, Mahbub Nagar district, several initiatives were taken which were significant. A vision document for agricultural growth was prepared for the district, which faced severe droughts and was recognized for thousands of migrant laborers. Galvanized youth to undertake role in several government programs through youth component plan. Impact of Naxalism in the district was moderated due to the leadership in all development programs. General elections were peacefully conducted in the district in 1991. As principal secretary, medical and health department prepared policy initiatives for improving performance in this crucial sector. Health reforms implemented in DFID, our program won national acclaim. Standards of diagnostics services in government facilities received a boost. A proactive HR program was brought in to improve service standards of hospitals. New paths were made to encourage trained medical professionals to serve rural and tribal areas and later to prosecute higher studies. When crime flu broke out in Andhra Pradesh, uh, he undertook the key role in containing the spread of that disease and prevented loss of life effectively. So that's why we are introducing, because this is very important to talk, that which initiatives were taken under the lead speakers and as an administrator. Because we are working under the Ministry of Personal and Department of Administrative Reforms. So good governance means we can improve the governance through reforms uh, and also the reforms through administrative. If somebody is sitting at administrative level and how, how he uh, provided the services according to his post and initiatives, so that's why we are organizing the series, a uh, number of series on this. And the second lead speaker, the madam is here, Srimati Keshni Anand Arora. She is well known also. Srimati Keshni Anand Arora is the former chief secretary to government of Haryana. With regard to her educational qualification, she is a topper in MA, political science, and MPhil and a topper of 1983 batch of IS. She did her MBA from University of Western Sydney, Australia. She had a long experience of more than 37 years of management being a part of Indian administrative service. She was appointed the first lady deputy commissioner 
of Haryana since the formation of the state of Haryana. She played an important role in implementation of adult literacy by voluntary organizations in the district and in handling law and order situations. As managing director, Haryana State Electronics Development Corporation Limited and Director Information and Technology played an important role in implementing IT projects in the state, conceptualized and finalized the detailed project for Haryana State Wide Area Network under National E-Governance Plan. Haryana was first state to implement SWAN in India under NEGP. As Principal Secretary Tourism, she introduced online system for reservation of Haryana tourism room and facilities which online payment gateway, which was replicated by other state central government organizations. She has also worked as Deputy Director General UIDAI Regional Office Chandigarh with Government of India, wherein she has been instrumental in implementing Aadhaar and Aadhaar applications in the state of Punjab, Haryana, Chandigarh, Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir especially pilot of the Manrega, Aadhaar at birth and linkages of Aadhaar with LPG in India. She was instrumental in speeding up Aadhaar enrollments and Aadhaar seeding in beneficiaries database in Northern region. She had contributed significantly in implementing Aadhaar based DBT in Manrega. Various scholarships and social welfare pensions and other DBT schemes. The state could save crores of rupees due to Aadhaar based deduplication de of beneficiaries. She monitored various prestigious projects and welfare scheme of state government as chief secretary to government Haryana from 1-7-2019 and retired, retired on September, retired on September 38, 2020, given lectures on various topics such as on organizational issues, conflict management, de-stressing, values and ethics, tourism promotion, governance issues, corruptions, nepotism, integrity, aptitude, values, rural of e-governance, brevity in governance, service delivery, values and ethical dimensions, dynamics, motivation, communication, team building, issues of women empowerment in the large numbers of institutions such as uh, in Himachal Pradesh, National Center for Good Government, Masuri Uttarakhand, Punjab University, Chandigarh, Haryana Institute of Public Administration, and so many other prestigious issues, institutes. Now, I would like to the Director General of National Center for Good Governance, who has thought this vision and he has basically directed us that we should organize the series of this type of good governance webinar because during the pandemic virtual meeting is not, I think, the possible. That's why. So that this session is going to be chaired by the Sri V. Srinivas. So I'd like to in introduce Sri V. Srinivas. Sir. If there is some small introduction. Uh, I think <laughs> Sri V. Srinivas joined the Indian Administrative Service in 1989 at age 22. This is very important and has 32 years of distinguished service. He is currently the additional secretary to government of India in the Ministry of Personal Public Grievances and Pensions with additional charge of Director General, National Center for Good Governance. He has served as chairman of the Board of Revenue of Rad for Rajasthan, Ajmer and the Rajasthan Tax Board. He has also served as security Secretary to Government of Rajasthan, Deputy Secretary and Joint Secretary in Government of India, as Advisor to Executive Director, International Monetary Fund, Washington, D.C., Director General, National Archives of India, and as Deputy Director, Administration at the All India Institute of Medical Services, Sciences. V. Srinivas is an Indian Council of World Affairs Fellow for the year 2017-2019 for his book, India's Relations with the International Monetary Fund, 1991 to 2016, 25 years in perspective. V. Srinivas' second book, Towards a New India Governance Transformed, 2014 and 19, was published in 2019 by Konak Publishers. V. Srinivas has a master's degree in chemical engineering from College of Technology, Osmania University. He joined the India Administrative Service in 1989 and, 99, and he he has orated so many important issues during this pandemic, and he is a senior policymaker and academician as an institu institutional builder par excellence. So, sir, I would like to introduce you. In, uh, I'd like to I invite you to give the introductory speak for this auspicious session, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor Punamji. Uh, it's a very special day for the National Center for Good Governance today. And I extend a warm and hearty welcome to two distinguished uh, speakers, 
and senior colleagues Sri Elvi Subramaniam Garu and uh, Srimati Keshni Anand Aruraji, former Chief Secretaries of Andhra Pradesh and Haryana respectively, to discuss the subject State Administration and Leadership Role of Chief Secretary. Let me introduce the subject before handing it to the two speakers. In the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, India is witnessing Governance 4.0, where states stand at the forefront of the nation's governance model. It's important to understand the leadership and management roles played by senior administrators at the state government level in Gov 4.0. The Chief Secretary's mandate in the state government is vast and covers a gamut of areas like policy making, strategic decisions, monitoring of implementation, appointments of key personnel, coordination and evaluation. The Chief Secretary symbolizes the best qualities of good governance in state administration with proven leadership skills in enhancing state capacity, performance monitoring and coordination and pursuit of transparent systems of governance, fighting corruption, building ethical organizations and playing a mentoring role for the civil servants in the state administration. The Chief Secretary is also the chairperson of the State Disaster Management Authority and the COVID-19 pandemic has shown the importance of the post in 2020. Further, Chief Secretaries are the instrument of state administration to create new institutions, to enforce rules to make these institutions work, and sound implementation of welfare state schemes in education, health, poverty alleviation, and employment. They are also responsible for building strong collective leadership in the civil service. It is the Chief Secretary's dynamism that enables the state bureaucracy to become a strong instrument in the government's developmental agenda. The Chief Secretary is a highly respected position that epitomizes the foundational principles of integrity, credibility and trust in the civil service by the people of India. The decisions that come from the chair are neutral and enable the state to achieve the objectives outlined in the preamble of the constitution. The motto is commitment to the larger public good against all odds. There is much we need to learn from the officials who have held this venerated post and shouldered so much responsibility. It is in, indeed NCGG's great privilege to host two such officials. I greatly look forward to listening to our esteemed speakers on this subject. To commence the discussion, I invite Sri Elvi Subramanian Garu, former Chief Secretary, Government of Andhra Pradesh, for his remarks. Thank you, sir. Uh, very good morning to Professor Pram Singh for being so kind to introduce my good friend and batchmate. So nice to see you, Keshni. Sri Srinivas, again, a good friend uh, from whom all of us admire for so many good qualities. His first quality, which pulled me into this, is his persuasive skills to make all these retired guys come back and speak. Uh, it's a very interesting topic, no doubt, and it's very, very close to all our hearts. Every civil servant who joins this uh, illustrious service would always imbibe a lot of things by looking at the chief secretary. All of us learned like that. We unknowingly, we must have mimed several of our chief secretaries when we function as a chief secretary. The time that is given to me is 20 minutes, so it's about 12.18 now, so I should be stopping exactly at 12.40. As all of us know, chief secretary is the executive head of the state secretariat and he is the administrative head of the state administration. He or she stands at the apex of the hierarchy of the state administration. Then he also becomes the chief of all the secretaries and controls the secretariat departments. He is the senior most civil servant in the state. There are, of course, these days some ex exceptions which are happening, which I'll come to a little later in my presentation. As the powers and functions which are all mentioned in the business rules and secretariat office manual that is brought out by the state government. Of course, there are several, several functions, but I'm just touching few of them. One is, of course, as an advisor to the chief minister. Now, 
his ability to advise the chief minister is always resting on his seniority in the cadre and because of the vast experience that he or she brings to bear the administrative environment now usually the chief ministers are quite ignorant about the implications of various policy formulations they are driven very passionately by their political ambitions by their manifestos by comparing comparing themselves with other state governments but when it comes to implications of their decisions it is there that the chief secretary has to play a very important role he has to inform the chief minister and through him to the concerned minister when the proposal comes about how the proposals can be dangerous how the proposals can be desirous whether the proposals can be postponed so different stand that the chief secretary takes is conveyed to the minister concerned through the chief chief minister's office so this is a very important administrative function that the chief secretary does that is in advising the chief minister as far as all the various policy formulations are concerned chief secretary also he liaises with the government of india so several secretaries in government of india the joint secretaries whenever any new program is brought out a, a concern is there in any of the ministries in delhi then it is the chief secretary who is liaisoning with that concerned secretary or the joint secretary and bringing forth the view of the state government and how the concerns of the state government have not been properly appreciated by government of india's agencies so he acts as a chief liaisoning officer as far as the state administration is concerned <coughs> within the state government among the various departments the interdepartmental matters when they come up uh, we can appreciate that most of the programs that are drawn by the state they have an overlapping nature whether the welfare programs whether the regulatory programs whether it is the infrastructure program there are usually multiple departments which come to bear so chief secretary automatically becomes a choice to coordinate to bring in legislation to bring in the rules for implementation of the legislation to prepare the outlays for the particular program to give proper instructions to the district collectors and to guide them in the implementation of the program it is the chief secretary who always shoulders the additional responsibility then when it comes to vigilance matters acb and matters where integrity of senior officers is in question sometimes it is embarrassing when there are complaints which come against the ministers how do we handle it it is always the chief secretary who shoulders that responsibility and guides the investigating agencies <coughs> sorry in taking the investigation forward the last function which i thought i'll just quickly mention here is the coordination that happens as far as various government of india's programs and projects are concerned for example i was involved in coordinating two three projects like the gas pipeline project the grid connecting uh, power project the roads project things like this the railway line extension these are the kind of projects which are of great importance from a national perspective so government of india and present uh, the prime minister shri narendra modi ji they take great interest in seeing that the bottlenecks which happen between the state governments are easily sorted out and the government of india funded projects whether it is externally externally funded or is it funded by domestic resources how quickly these projects are implemented sometimes the concern of the state government may have to take a back seat when the national projects are being implemented so it is there the role of the chief secretary 
becomes very important that he calls the concerned departmental officer and appraises him of how government of India is viewing this project and how it is very important for the state government to implement that project and take it forward. The state government secretary, for example, when the uh, pipeline was being laid and the power towers are being erected, there was a problem of right of way. The farmers were demanding a higher rate of compensation. Now for right of way, the agencies don't acquire the land. They only pay uh, a kind of a compensation which is equivalent to the crop loss, uh, particularly when it is a gas pipeline which is being laid below the surface of the soil. So explaining the stand of government of India to the concerned secretary and empowering the secretary to meet the collector and some of the members of the legislative assembly and thereby to reach the public at large with this conviction that it is not possible for us to uh, put a spoke in the government of India project and how this is a larger infrastructure project which could be of great help even to the state government in days to come. So in these kind of uh, areas, undoubtedly it is the chief secretary who has to play a very, very important role. For the power corporation people or the Gale officials, they are the ones who keep coming and uh, uh, trying to enlist the support of the chief secretary. Of course, my batchmate is going to deal with disaster management, so I'm not going into those areas at all, where again, the chief secretary plays an important role in licensing with central agencies and licensing with government of India. And we have been seeing for the recent times how the cabinet secretary is taking the meetings with all the government of India departments and he calls the chief secretary of a particular state along with his group of secretaries when there is a national uh, natural calamity which uh, is of national proportions. Now these are the various kind of coordinating role that the chief secretary plays in improving the performance at the state level and his important role in personnel administration is the one which gives him an edge in coordinating on behalf of the state government, both at the state level and at the central level. So if that is uh, that personal administration, if that position of the chief secretary is compromised because of any reason, and it has a very serious bend into the role that the chief secretary can play in all the matters which are of great significance. Now, this is what we have been seeing as the trend in the administration the last 34 to 35 years. And the last two, three years, we are seeing also some change in this particular kind of a pattern in the status. And we are seeing how several state governments are uh, compromising on the role of the chief secretary in the administrative matters. I would like to uh, label this part of the presentation for 10 to 12 minutes as growing concerns, the emerging trends which are coming and how there are growing concerns which need the attention of several people at the state and more importantly at the center. The first one which I would like to uh, place here, the concern is that the proposals which are being taken to state cabinets is always the proposals are being cooked in a great hurry and they are going in an incomplete state to the state council. Now what happens is the implications are not understood, the budgetary requirements are not understood, the cascading effect of that particular policy is not understood, but the policy requires to be uh, green signaled in the cabinet meeting. Now, as I already mentioned to you, chief secretary as a chief advisor to the chief minister and as the convener of the state council of ministers, he is perforce pushed with this agenda, which has to be quickly taken to cabinet. And sometimes the administrative secretary is equally 
uh, uh, should I say, unprepared to dwell on the implications of these policy. Now, this is something which is of great significance because in the name of collective responsibility, several policies are going into state cabinets, which are which are likely to cause havoc in the immediate future and uh, undoubtedly in the future. This is one great concern. The second is that increasingly we are finding that the state governments are bringing proposals which are far, far exceeding the revenues that are available or the revenues that can be mobilized. Now, this is something which is of great significance today. And uh, they, are, uh, they are, of course, uh, all the time talking about welfare administration and state governments always believe in the uh, mobilization for voting. Probably with the Honorable Prime Minister's call to have uniform elections across the country as one go may itself be a panacea for this particular problem. But the revenues of a state are seriously getting hampered because of this particular ambitious style. The third uh, concern I have is, though there are FRBM norms which have been fixed, and uh, I don't have to dwell on that too much, there are uh, bypasses which are getting uh, slowly identified on how the FRBM trunk, even if it is getting blocked or choked, the other bypass arrangements are being arranged. For example, the AP Civil Services, uh, Civil Supplies Corporation of Andhra Pradesh has today a liability of nearly 40,000 crores. Now, if each corporation in a state government, which is backed by government guarantee, partially or fully, is able to borrow this kind of money, then you can understand what a kind of a burden that we are leaving for the posterity. The fourth concern, which I would like to uh, flag here, is the tenure of the chief secretary. Now, this is again an area where most of the state governments are happily shifting the chief secretaries at their whims and fancies. Now, this is going to be uh, a great disaster for the state machinery, the senior officers concerned, because they will all be fearing that their turn would not be very far off. So we need to see how the tenure of the chief secretary can be fixed, whether it should be two years, whether it should be one year, whether it should be six months, but a tenure, if it is assured, then I think the chief secretary's position becomes a little more stronger than what it is today. And then I, I address another issue, which is how in some of the state governments, the senior most civil servant is being bypassed and uh, in some state cadres, we have seen how even six to seven years, nine years, an officer is picked to be made as a chief secretary, bypassing nine batches of civil service. And thanks to the wonderful interpretation of federal laws that we have, government of India will be looking other side and these kind of uh, happenings are there. Now you can imagine the kind of uh, uh, morale that would get disturbed in a state cadre when seven or eight batches are bypassed and somebody is picked up for no great holy signs or for any endeavor or achievement. Now, this is something which is, can be very, very dangerous in the long run. So I just have one uh, solution to talk of for four or five minutes. This is about how we could think of having a zonal civil service board. For each state, if you start having a civil service board, I'm sure this practice in days to come will get severely compromised and uh, you may have officers picked into that civil service board who are also yes men of the particular dispensation which is obtaining there. So if it is a zonal in making, perhaps this zonal civil service board can visit different state governments and prepare administrative reports in saying how 
the state government is endeavoring to implement good governance legislations, transparency legislations, and how it is making accountability as a hallmark of their state administration at different levels. If that kind of a civil service board is constituted regionally. Let's say we have about four regions of the country. Then there are four civil service boards which are created. Then these boards can look into functioning of officers, functioning of the institution of the chief secretary, and with the help of chief secretary, they would also look at how the heads of the departments are functioning, how the various branches of state government are able to function, and what are the training requirements of the state government, what are the training requirements of senior civil servants in the state, these can be examined. And if there are some regional kind of, uh, there's a domain knowledge, then that could be shared among the states also to see how best practices are easily uh, scattered and dis disseminated among the various state governments so that the administrative hierarchy is informed of principles of good governance, of accountability, of transparency, and how constitutional principles are validated in every action of respective state government. So we need to find some ways, and as we have seen in the past, I think even now it is happening that the importance that state government gives for several of these principles can give them a kind of a marking for allocation of funds, for allocation of priorities, and for giving more and more officers to go on deputation to central government so that even an average, an ordinary civil servant aspires to be in that reckoning in his career. Now, this is something which we need to combine, not just the state government's larger say of giving more and more funds, but also giving an opportunity for the state government officers to work in several posts of deputation or on the card of post. So this is how we need to take stock today because of technology. We have got rapid decision making formats. We have got technology which assists in gathering of information at uh, uh, really breakneck speed. So with all this, the human material is getting severely compromised, which is a great cause of concern. Civil service in the country has always stood as a epitome of values, as someone who can always be counted in an hour of crisis, as someone who can always be seen to shun their clamor for publicity and somebody who cares for national development and state development. Now, this particular individual characteristics, I am told, are becoming scarce, and this is something on which we need to be extremely careful, and we see that the administrative acumen in this country is mobilized with a strong moral framework which we often hear from government of India, which is coming through. The karma yogi concept should be preceded by jnana yogi concept. Every civil servant must have this wisdom that he or she is not a permanent entity, that he or she must leave behind a track which is worthy of emulation by everybody in this country. I thank Mr. Srinivas for giving me this valuable opportunity. I treasure this opportunity. I'm so grateful to him. I'm also thankful to Professor Poonam Singh for uh, being here and saying those few words. I thank uh, everyone here for giving me an opportunity to address you. And I'll be glad if there are any questions which can be raised later, even if you have some comments to pass, I wish that you freely express them so that I could be benefited by your knowledge. Thank you so much. Good day.
Thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, we have benefited from listening to you. We will take questions on chat and uh, we'll take it up in the question answer session at the end of the discussion. It is my privilege now to invite Srimati Keshne Anand Arora, the former Chief Secretary of Haryana, uh, to present her views. Thank you, ma'am, for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Srinivas, and uh, for giving me this privilege. And uh, thank you, Dr. Poonam Singh, for talking so nice of me. And uh, thank you to LV that I could listen to him and see him after such a long time. Uh, in fact, um, I have uh, tried to speak about the role of CS in crisis management. In fact, um, the situation is that now we are increasingly confronted with crisis situations and uh, very unexpected emergencies which affect citizens. Uh, we have floods, droughts, communal riots, all these things keep on happening, but there are some unknown phenomena uh, with no historical precedence. The problem is we don't have even luxury of time to decide and to see what has happened and what has not happened and what is its impact. Then they have these challenges are with multiple dimensions and some inclusive decision making has to be done which is practical, keeping in mind the geographical factors, demographic realities, and resources available. There are multiple departments which are involved. Now, see this unknown phenomena like COVID, we never knew it. And in fact, I retired in September for seven months with COVID. So I, I share with you all the experiences. I'm happy some of the deputy commissioners are here. In fact, there are many chief secretaries in their own district, and that might help them in uh, taking some uh, takeaways from this uh, discussion. In fact, uh, who will coordinate with all these stakeholders? Only the role of chief secretary becomes all the more important. In fact, uh, there were situations uh, where uh, the whole government started feeling that after the DM Act, the DM and the chief secretary are playing so important a role uh, that the political leadership taking them along and uh, convincing them that this is uh, what is to be done was very tough for most of the chief secretaries. Uh, but uh, this uh, tough challenge uh, also gives us a lot of importance and a lot of exposure. And uh, I must say, I enjoyed every minute of it and uh, the way you can help public and you can do something good and your one decision changes the whole system uh, is very, very interesting to understand. Uh, but what is more important is the, the learnings that we had and uh, uh, in fact, the chief secretary should always have an institutional setup with him. Uh, in fact, uh, we have cabinet secretary's national crisis management group and I was looking at situations that most of the states, even Haryana had the chief secretary headed crisis management group only years back. But what is important is the change in the composition depending on the exigencies of the situation because non co-opting of any member can lead to a lot of problems. A single hierarchical chain of command is very important and only chief secretary can give that. And he has to report periodically and informally to the chief minister, but there has to be a chief minister at a group where these things are discussed. It involves a lot of ministries, and since it involves a lot of ministries, there are issues. But then it has to be supported by uh, certified protocols and procedures, and the situation has to be analyzed regularly. I narrate my experience. In fact, crisis management group decide, kept on deciding many things. We published it, gave the press note, the minutes were. And then when the department would put up the file to the minister, the minister would change the decision. It happened once, it happened twice. And then I had to go to the minister and said that I will not stop taking decisions in the crisis management group. If this happens, then what is the use of my deciding? And then he was a nice person and he said, okay, from now onwards, I'll, I'll, I'll follow whatever the crisis management group decides. 
Uh, but then I also made it a point of briefing him and the other minister and the chief minister on very, very crucial decisions so that there is no confusion. If chief secretary doesn't do it, then who does it? That is a question because these are very, very uh, holistic decisions which require uh, departments and uh, situations. Now, these decisions also require um, holistic perspective and changes with the changing scenario. Uh, in COVID-19, for instance, uh, this start, it started with uh, the home department, uh, with the health department. Health department said it is their department's work. Then it started with home. Then the disaster management types situation. Then it suddenly realized you needed supply, you needed police, uh, you needed supplies, you needed transportation. Then the situation came to the migrant issue. Then in the situation when the migrant issue uh, solved somewhat, then there was rubby procurement, then there was shortage of bags. So the situation continued changing and every day there was a full group which was deciding what next and how to deal with it. And there were crises one after another and for chief secretary to take a situation and take decision and then brief everyone in the uh, in, in the, the stakeholders was a very, very big work. Now, the crisis situation and this start not our PP kids. We didn't have masks, we didn't have facilities. I, I remember the team that uh, till 12 o'clock one day talking to all suppliers and ensuring that we get it. But the problem was that every state was monopolizing Generally, whenever there's a crisis, there's only one state which is affected or two states affected. Here, the whole India affected, the states would monopolize whatever was produced in their, uh, their states. So that we will not get the supplies even if we had ordered before or everything. Now, I had no option. There was I, my, my industry secretary was a very senior person and uh, uh, then um, they would not, uh, try to facilitate industries to produce, get all the approvals. So one day I kept on saying there was no response. And then one day what I did, uh, when three officers were standing outside and uh, four officers, then I said industry department is not working. We are not doing anything. They can't work like this. They are useless. I knew this would have the reaction. I know he came to me. He says, you are after my life. You are this, you are that. But then, within four days, the facilitation was done and the state was producing everything. Uh, sometimes you have to act. You have to just uh, show your anger just because you need results. Uh, then, uh, but then, uh, it is important that uh, then there was, there was a problem of mass. Uh, now, we did not know what kind of mass to be produced because we did not know what was needed. So then we realized that the advisor to prime ministers and science health sent some instructions on mass. Then we did not know how much GSM. Uh, you can't believe we spent full day deciding on what type of mass. And then that gave livelihood to so many unemployed ladies to the groups. And they started producing mass and got 250 rupees per day just on producing masks, and then we could get masks throughout for the public also. So small, small decisions and that uh, helped in, uh, and, and that gave us happiness and that gave happiness to people and facilitation. These are things which, because everything was closed, mass production was a problem. The getting the, even the cloth for the mask was a problem, but these, uh, you will say, Chief Secretary should not go to such a low level, but, Unless CS does it, who will do it? Unless they, uh, you delegate, yet there are coordination issues. Uh, they can't do it themselves. So these are the issues which are important. Now, the next thing that is important is the comprehensive mitigation management strategy that comes at the CS level. But then CS has to do the alignment of the strategy with the strategy of the political leadership. Otherwise, uh, and then also ensuring that what you are saying is, is 
is ultimately discussed, accepted, then it reaches to all the sectors. If every sector starts going to the CM and starting uh, advising on various things, then a coordinated action never happens. But it has to be consistent policy formulation and clarity of direction. Then I understood the role and responsibility of each functionary needs to be chugged out very clearly. Otherwise, there are communication failures. And then a systematic feedback from the lowest level. I still remember um, I would talk to the CMO Gurugam knowing very well that what are the actual problems because unless you know the actual problems you can't change the policy, you can't communicate properly. So open communication channels and criticism has to be taken very supportingly otherwise nothing happens. So the, the in fact this kind of and the, the decision making has to be by consensus. Uh, this consensus approach ultimately motivates people to take the ownership and accountability and otherwise they would not work on this. Then the personal management strategy, choosing right people, right work, using their potential very optimally. In fact, uh, you will be surprised we put senior officers on COVID duty every district seniority to that extent, even the additive factories. And they were told to stay there for 15 days. Serious the wives of those senior officers would look at me and say that, look, what has she done to her senior, to her husband, sending him to COVID area and uh, telling them to stay for 15, in fact, for six, three, four months. Uh, different kind of office, different officers stayed, some forest officers, some police senior officers. But then I, I asked them, what is the area you want? There they had already stayed or they had their relatives or their families. So I ensured that only, and then I was careful enough uh, not to send those who were unwell, who were more susceptible. But this kind of uh, humane touch helps people to understand that uh, Yes, she cares. The moment they know that she cares, it or he cares, that helps in uh, dealing with situations. But then you also need to understand your personnel very well, your subordinates very well. You should know what are their strong points and which strong point a person can be put in what duty. But then you have also to get the flexibility. I, I share the concerns of LV that you have to have that flexibility also uh, that uh, the chief minister or the chief minister staff doesn't stop you from putting those persons on duty because unless uh, uh, if you order and ultimately they change the orders then you have it um, the, there are always challenges there are uh, in fact um, there were some some officers who would go to cm and say that unless she says yes to uh, a, a, a decision uh, we will not implement. Uh, these 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 sometimes lead to issues, and ultimately it was very difficult to manage such issues. But um, and considering what LV said that uh, there's no security of tenure, and uh, and and you see in adjoining districts, chief chief secretary is being transferred every day, uh, being being shunted out every day. Um, certainly is a concern for any chief secretary uh, because uh, you know uh, there have been cases where they've come from a meeting and in the evening they have been told okay goodbye and um, these things certainly affect the office of the chief secretary uh, these are very very important things which uh, need to be uh, uh, to be really streamlined and uh, these are governance issues uh, anybody having uh, insecurity of tenure uh, is going to uh, be affected and uh, worried. Uh, in fact, uh, in the morning, you always say that uh, God bless us that every day goes okay, but which is not very, uh, very happy situation. Now, the feedback has to come from everybody. In fact, uh, I, I still remember an officer telling me that I've talked to you today. I will now talk to you tomorrow. I said, why? Why not evening? He says, I, I get sometimes very worried. Your information channels are so 
so many and you get so much information uh, i i get disturbed so <laughs> this is very very interesting because uh, but then information set net network has to be very very strong it is not only cid which gives you information you should be getting information from informal channels press from uh, others and sift that information whether it is correct or not um now coordination is very very important and any 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 officer whose coordination is a forte is always a success because it as uh, lv rightly said you have to do lessening with government of india officials adjoining states here in fact migrant issue required a tie up with the uh, with the adjoining states and the other states and it was very tough. um then putting whom to duty in fact i remember i had uh, put a very senior police officer on uh, the transfer uh, transportation of migrants and i some people were disturbed why i didn't put uh, my so these are things which uh, but then you have to see who is the best in what circumstances then uh, tying up with i i am in fact uh, surprisingly in haryana it doesn't have a history of ngos and we had uh, a huge number of ngos providing food and logistics to migrants various organizations had to be in fact uh, radha swami satsang had uh, a very senior ias officer uh, mr sikri and he went out of the way to help haryana um uh, luckily he was the batchmate of my sister and it it helped me to work on it so the coordination has to be at all levels now since anything which relates to government of india giving them proper feedback at proper time is very very important because they are dealing with india as such they don't know the problems of your state they don't know the problems which are arising at the actual level so even at the government of india level tying up with home secretary health secretary then the informal channels which are working there with various groups uh, is is a challenge and um, your cm wants you to get through some things and uh, and if you are not able to do uh, that requires a lot of networking and lot of uh, uh, goodwill and uh, respect that you you require so that they listen to you these are very very important things um, then some of the things uh, require an intervention by the government of india for instance private labs and there are a number of dilemmas which uh, keep on happening with the chief secretary uh, i i remember in gurugram and in faridabad some of the private labs were getting checkups for covid and not Publish not giving results in time, informal results, so that those people are not quarantined, and and the and the and the private hospitals were not uh, providing death figures uh, and not even getting COVID tests done for their own staff. Now the dilemma was that uh, at one time there were about thousand to two thousand cases, which had hidden, uh, which which were. Uh, which were actually covid patients and not uh, shown by the private labs um we kept on telling everyone to check no then one day i told uh, the commissioner division that look uh, start getting the numbers there is a contradiction on the uh, on the then private labs had to be tackled because private labs had in fact i remember we had to inform even home minister in one of the meetings and he said that uh, now you have raised this issue and now we will sort it out but uh, yes the effect that I, it had on uh, the private labs on, on 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 the phone calls that i got that look what are we doing why are you unnecessarily criticizing people but the dilemma was whether to whether to expose our issues and then say that yes because if i if i keep on hiding then i increase the covid so these are the dilemmas uh, which you face always uh, whether i i remember the whole night i didn't sleep thinking whether i uh, i i make it open or i don't i keep it hidden uh, these are these are the things which 
uh, chief secretary keeps on getting and uh, finding whether uh, to speak or not to speak, whether um, uh, to 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 be like uh, um, you know just keep quiet. Uh, these hush up things. These are things which uh, which are uh, ethical dilemmas that keep on facing the chief secretary. Uh, I I remember. Uh, uh, I, I must say the home, uh, the home secretary, union home secretary was always so helpful. Whenever we raised our issues, he sorted it out. He was on phone. I could talk. But uh, chief secretary is one uh, setup which generally has to coordinate, and only his voice uh, or her voice is heard. But uh, then uh, we have to strategize and uh, plan protocols and plan accordingly. And communicate what government of India has done to various. I had to communicate to not only the chief minister but concerned ministers, everything, so that when they talk to the press, they talk on the same level. When they decide, they talk on the same level. These are very important things. And then another thing is that the training of all stakeholders. We we think when we have ordered. It is then not followed by geos and not followed by protocols. Uh, we have to train them and clear communication strategy has to be formulated by the chief secretary. Uh, saying that uh, the juniors would do it or otherwise we have to, they do it, delegate properly, but then uh, it's important that uh, you, you watch. But this is, this is a very interesting situation that sometimes uh, you really don't know uh, that uh, you are uh, what you are doing. Is it intervention? Is it uh, interfering in the work or it is monitoring? So another thing uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll try to shorten it is the utmost sensitivity in reaching out to the public that has to be told. In fact, in COVID, the problem was to differentiate between pandemic and law and order situation, telling the police people that they are equally suffering. The people are suffering. Empathy uh, and uh, handling social media, uh, these are very, very important. The key takeaways, uh, which are very important, is avoiding ad hocism, single chain of command. You may delegate, but delegate, but see monitoring that these delegations are properly used. Then, uh, media management who will communicate, what will be communicated, transparency has to be done. Then, um, in fact, institutional shortcomings and gaps have to be filled up again and again, unless otherwise it leads to fragmented and incoherent response. The leadership of chief secretary plays a very, very important role. He has to, he has to be first to take the blame and last to get appreciated. Uh, in fact, uh, if you start complaining against secretaries to the ministers or chief secretary or the chief minister, they will disappear from you. They will not. So you have to be both loved and respo respected, as uh, uh, Aristotle said, uh, uh, loved and feared also. So unless uh, both things are done, uh, the chief secretary's role becomes very, very important. He has to guide, he has to motivate. And then the fatigue that sets in when a long pandemic happens, uh, that also chief secretary has to play a role, keep motivating, keep communicating, uh, saying you are very good. Um, if you criticize a person, then two days later, you have to cover that up. Because people say that, look, we are already working in COVID and this this person is, is always uh, complaining against us. It's, so you have to maintain that balance. And that balance is very, very difficult to maintain by a chief secretary. Uh, I, I really thank uh, uh, everyone for listening to me with great patience. Um, uh, and I again uh, thank uh, Mr. Srinivas and Dr. Poonam uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, perhaps I became a bit nostalgic. Thank you very much. Grateful. Uh, we're deeply privileged to hear you, madam. Uh, and. Uh, 
Uh, we've actually heard two brilliant presentations on the challenges uh, senior civil servants face in administration. I'd like to flag two questions for uh, this lead discussants. First uh, question for Sri Elvi Subramanian Garu. Uh, sir, how do you see time management uh, role of the chief secretary? In fact, uh, when I look back 30 years ago also, I would see chief secretary was extremely caught up, bound with uh, hundreds of files on his table which was the uh, governance 1.0 model where everything was manual. And today we are looking at governance 4.0 where so much of e-policy participation, e-office systems have set in. How did you, uh, but still I find chief secretaries are extraordinarily busy people. There, There is, it's very, very difficult for him to uh, have anything less than a hundred hour work week or 120 hour work week at times. So uh, how do you see the time management uh, skills and also uh, why is it that uh, the workloads uh, in terms of managing time are not coming down even in a digital age? Yeah, you're right, Srinivas. In fact, uh, the Chief Secretary, every end of every month, at least there are two committees added to the list of the committees which he has to head. So there is an increasing trend of number of committees which are there. But uh, honestly, uh, the first principle which every chief secretary needs to look at is his or her own fitness. I think if he or she is physically fit, then most of the things fall in line. I think physical fitness is at the root of the functioning uh, which I realized because you are you have to be alert and you have to be as Keshri so beautifully said, you have to always uh, you may chide somebody but you're also ready to praise him or her. And uh, you have to maintain uh, warmth, at the same time keep some distance. So to be alert to these various qualities, I think your physical fitness is very, very important. And secondly, the chief secretary, his own office, is something which has also become very, very important these days. So he needs to have at least two or three very, very trusted people who are, you know, efficient with capital E and, you know, the guys who can run the uh, computers very efficiently and who can uh, confidentially manage things for the chief secretary. That's become very, very important. So time management is there, but I think uh, because of the trust that you begin to repose in several senior secretaries, many a time you are discussing in the lift, you are talking in the verandas, and you are going to your lunch table and then a secretary just comes and whispers a particular issue and says, sir, this is the best thing I'm going to do like this. I hope it is okay with you. So, you know, you, you develop new styles of disposal of matters. And then of course, chief secretaries, uh, uh, time becomes very important when he has to join other meetings of chief minister. I mean, I didn't have time to dwell on that. That becomes sometimes a big catch. If the chief minister is too fond of the chief secretary and he's too much relying on the chief secretary, that is also quite dangerous. That, uh, you know, he, you and the uh, chief minister are uh, going hunky-dory for every meeting, then your work gets really affected. So there is a convention in Andhra Pradesh for some time that uh, the beginning of the week or middle of the week, at least once or twice, the chief minister and the CS, they spend a couple of minutes. But that is a good practice. So we don't have to go like the intelligence officers and the DG every day and meet the CM. So if the CM organizes his work uh, methodically and he gives you advanced intimation about his engagements, then your time management also improves. Uh, these are some quick uh, points that come up to my mind. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we take note of the fact that you have to be extremely fit to do this job. I think that is the big lesson that comes from this discussion. Uh, I, I have a question for Madam Keshniji. Uh, Ma'am, in the pandemic, uh, people have, uh, the several civil servants I have seen both at different level and educated who have placed service above self and uh, have stood up uh, for the call of national duty, uh, putting in enormous number of hours. So when you look back and see, uh, do you see best practices or examples of such outstanding brilliance 
uh, under your leadership? Yes, actually, there's so many and those whose potential was never known and they did it so well. In fact, um, uh, I feel that we should have a system of rewarding, but the problem is that uh, like uh, police models you have and why not in civil services? But uh, the thing is that sometimes there is too much politics in it and you want to avoid it. Uh, but uh, yes, I made it a point to appreciate the services in the ECRs with the appreciation letters and ensure that um, uh, they get uh, rewarded uh, in terms of the appreciation letters. Uh, in fact, people have worked like, uh, you know, 20, uh, uh, 20 hours in those 24 days, uh, 24 hours, and it was great. They were always smiling. Uh, in fact, um, they, they, they worked with a great humane approach, and, uh, and I think uh, nobody talked against bureaucracy, at least in Haryana, that they are not working. They're always there when private sector failed. The government hospitals, the government, uh, in fact, uh, we put even dentists and Ayurveda uh, doctors for the uh, COVID test, and they were never afraid. Um, God has been really great, and I must say, uh, only civil services uh, can really come up uh, in times of crisis. And I think my experience with UID and uh, Nandan also uh, recognized later. Uh, that uh, the civil services have that potential and uh, they can uh, they do marvels if they want. Thank you very much, ma'am. In fact, uh, we're deeply privileged to listen to two civil servants who have served the nation with such nobility and commitment. May I now invite Professor Poonam Singhji to kindly give the vote of thanks. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was a wonderful session. We have learned a lot what the difficulties uh, have been faced by the senior bureaucrats and how they handle it. So we are very, very fortunate that this session has been done and we uh, we have uh, we are very privileged to listen. Uh, so um, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, our two lead speakers, Sir Subramanim Sir and Madam Anand Keshni Anand Arura Ma'am, who has given thrown the light on the system, how can uh, they face during their tenure and uh, how they manage to monitor and all the things. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. And all the participants from the top universities and the lead universities, all the senior academicians, I, I, have, uh, I have gone through the participants. There's some, I think there are senior, I think there's some civil servants, they have already joined and the, some the, from the management side, the faculties have joined and the faculties from NCGG and other sectors, they have joined. So thank you so much, all of them. And uh, last but not the least, I thank all the technical person, especially Akash and the other uh, person who are helping uh, in this institute. Thank you so much, sir. Amen. And finally, I would like to thank my director general, Sri V. Srinivasar, who keep, I think, doing very, very hard work to organize the series of this because he always uh, given a light on this uh, that we should manage, we should organize these type of series because it is very helpful for the, I think, implementing person, especially for the bureaucrats and the civil servants who are working at their field, especially the IS officer and the civil servants and other administrative head and the lead. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. 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 Thank